Hello and welcome back to a splash of paint. So let's get started and continue our feature taking a look at the trees through the seasons. Today I want to show you a few simple tips and techniques to help you capture the golden tones of autumn. I've got the uh, watercolour paper there ready for action and I want to mix up a few colours to start with and for this I want to use a medium sized tree and texture brush. This is like a badger mixture brush which means it's very spiky so it gives you a natural stippling effect. And the autumn colour is a mixture of aureolin or any bright yellow, not lemon. Lemon's a little bit too bright. So it's like a golden yellow. This one's aureolin. A little bit of water, as I say. Um, don't be afraid to use strong mixtures for the trees. I think that's a common mistake people make. They make the colour too thin. So quite definite. Mix it with some burnt sienna. And that gives you what I'd call a medium or an average kind of autumn colour. Just pop a little bit in the corner so you can see there. So that's a good golden autumn tone. And what I'll do with this is I'll use this medium tree brush. And in the centre, I'm just going to use the flat side of that brush. I'm just going to sweep it across, almost on a bit of a sort of rocking motion. I can fill the area in. One of the nice things that comes from this is that you get a few lighter patches. And then we'll start to stipple. So I'll stipple around the edge with the tree brush using the flat side of it. Imagine the nice open leaves on the tree as it's changed colour. And we can do that all the way around the edge, but making sure that it blends in with the surrounding area. There we go, so a nice tap like so, making sure it all blends in. If you get in a few dry patches, go over them, it gives you the texture of the leaf. I'll put that brush away and I'll go for the small tree and texture brush. Always make sure it's damp, but not soaking wet. And add some natural grey to this colour, make the colour darker. So the colour has now gone into a, a shadow form, like a brownie colour. Natural grey will go into any colour and turn it into a shadow. That's the idea of it, really. Bit of kitchen roll, bit of a stipple, but not soaking wet. Trees have ins and outs. You can almost see, this is a good example, where it sticks out and it goes in, and it comes out again and it goes in. Now, this is where the shadows will be, the shadows will be on the in parts of the tree. And you gently kind of tap as the paper is a bit damp. Now as you put this in, it might look a bit stripy like a tiger, but we'll blend this in, so don't worry about it. It's just part of the process, if you like. So put in a few shadowed areas in, put one at the top as well. So again, it's where the in parts are of the tree, ideally. It's quite nice at the bottom to put a little bit on as well. So a few lines across the tree. Now what I tend to do is clean my brush, wipe it almost dry, squeeze it through some tissue, just make sure it is damp to dry, and use that brush very gently and blend in by tapping, by bouncing across the paper. And it's tapping in and working in the actual shadow areas into the lighter parts of the tree. And it's giving you the impression of a uh, shadow in the actual tree. The dark pieces go back, the orangey pieces come forward. There we go. And then come back to another mixture, aureolin with a little bit of burnt sienna. Same brush again, tree brush. Give it a bit of a stipple because the painting is kind of dry. It's just nice on any flat areas, just to put a bit of a tap of this colour. This is the original colour what I used, just remixed it again and you can work over the top and you can stipple in a few extra little bits and bobs of uh, texture, leaf texture is what you're looking for. Put that away. Using something like a credit card or the corner of a paint tube, over the dark areas it's nice just to scratch out a few branches. Because again it's the dark areas where you'd see those. 
So any kind of blunt object is what you want to be using. Don't use a, a sharp knife because it will actually scratch your paper as you do this. So it's just using the uh, blunt objects like a credit card corner or even a coin is quite good for this, to be honest. And then up the centre, we'll put the dark. So fingernails a bit wider for this. So we'll go up, making it a little bit wider, right in the centre. And then just to finish off, we're going to use a size 6, a size 6 brush. Nice dark colour, so I could use the shadow colour, just add more grey to it, make it really dark. And at the bottom of the tree, just add that little bit of a trunk there. And then just continue it up and almost just put a darker side to the piece you've just scratched in. And then with a damp brush, wipe it on tissue. I can just lightly soften that in, blend it across to the lighter parts. There we go. And it's always nice to finish off with a bit of uh, fallen autumn leaf on the ground. That's essential, really. And a rigger brush, which is a long, skinny, pointy brush, is ideal just for adding those one or two extra little darker branches that are just poking out from the tree there. And then a bit of a old country fence post and a bit of a shadow from the bottom of the tree. And I think as simple as it is, that's a very effective way of painting an almost realistic tree effect. And that's what it's all about, folks, making it look as though it's got the light and the dark shades in the right place. But there you go, a finished autumn tree. So there you go, folks, have a practice. And remember, we're always keen to say examples of how you get on. Next week, we'll conclude our trees through the seasons feature and take a look at what happens when all the leaves have disappeared and the beautiful bare structure is revealed when we look at how to paint trees in winter. Right, whilst I go and wash out my palette, let's go over to the other side of the studio and rejoin versatile SAA watercolour artist Louise Bogard as she puts the final finishing touches to a lovely coastal landscape in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand Up project. Uh, earlier in the programme you saw me get this far with the coastal scene. What I've done now is I've taken the little bit of masking fluid off that I had p applied, tiny little bits, but it's just enough to give a little bit of a sparkle, um, and I cannot, for the life of me, draw a straight line. So what I've done is I've put a little bit of masking tape right across the dried sky um, to preserve a straight line so I can paint the this distant sea, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to put in a little bit of the sky colour, which is Prussian blue with a little bit of opera rose, do a swathe across that, which I can now be really liberal and just go for it, which is brilliant because I've got some masking tape there. Fingers crossed it works. And another little one, just a little bit below. What I'm going to do then, clean the brush, and I've got a little bit of just Prussian blue and a touch of green gold in it. So it's much more of a, a bright turquoisey colour to replicate the sea. So I'll put that right at the top and allow that to blend a little bit, and I'm going to get my rigger, pick up the first Prussian blue and opera rose, and come down again a little bit lower. I have put some of the wax candle in here to cry, try and create the sense of some of the breaking waves, so I was just wondering why it's resisting, and I've forgotten. Hey, I put some wax crayon in, or wax candle in. Interestingly, wild waves on the Cornish coastline. I'm softening the edge of the sea, picking up water rather than any further pigment as the waves are, are coming further onto the beach. I'm going to, I've just seen there's a bit of a gap there, let's pop a little bit extra blue on there and suggest that coming down. And with my rigger, just use water to wash that down there. Just pop a little bit more of this purple colour. 
It's also thinking about complementary colours. You've got the blue against the yellow, so that really helps this painting to sing. I mean, nature does it for you. As you can see, that it's, um, obviously on a beach there's a bluey-green uh, sky and then sea and then this gorgeous orangey-yellow sand. And I'm dotting around again with this lovely flat brush. Brilliant, as I said earlier. That one needs a bit more strength. So does that. Maybe there. I'm to dribble. Get rid of that. More strength on that one. And now I'm going to go to the French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna so that I'm getting a bit of a change in the colours for these rocks. Big flat wash. Try and keep a ridge between some of the rocks so that you can see that they are separate. And the odd big one there. I'm going a bit quiet, so I'm concentrating. It'll never do, will it? Some more purple. Dropping some of that purple into the, the darker rock. And then I'm going to use my rigger and pick up some of the yellow ochre. That makes some very interesting marks. I love the way it dribbles into there and just explodes. It could be lichen, it could be... It wouldn't be lichen, would it? It would be seaweed and all sorts of strange and wonderful things from the beach. Temptation to flick there, but I will resist for the moment. Oh, oops, easily. Drop my brush. Picking up some of that purple. I want to create a bit of a line there. That seems to be a bit flat as I'm looking at it. And I've got a white area here, but I'm just going to do a tiny touch of negative painting, put a rock there. And soften that edge a little. And a little bit of purple into the dark one. Right, back to the flat brush. Fabulous big rock here. I'm going to stick this one in. Let's get that really chunky and bold. Definitely gone quiet now. Too much concentration. <laughs> Let's go over to this one. Pop some over here. Dancing the brush around, getting all sorts of patterns. Oh, that's really come out very nicely. There's a bit of wax candle on that one, so we've got a nice white light area showing up. Now, the colour that I put in earlier, you can see it's really kind of diffused, so I need to strengthen these foreground rocks. If you treat yourself to anything, definitely get one of these little flat brushes there. Absolutely brilliant. Right, just step back. Let's have a little look. Oh, there's a rock there. Can I go in? Yep. By the way, I have to leave this in on here until it's completely dry, otherwise I will get a very hazy sea and horizon. Yep, yeah, that's looking fine. Right, I'm going to do the one thing that I absolutely love doing and everyone groans because I get it everywhere. So, spattering time. Move the photograph down because it can act as my mask, as it were. Whoops. That'll do. I'm going to have some directional uh, spatters. What's the betting? It'll go right there, but I don't want it to go. So, firm tapping with the... Uh, I can feel I'm spraying myself. <laughs> Again, trying to keep that direction. I want some little spatters around the existing rocks so that it suggests tiny pebbles. I'll have some going this way, help that sense of movement. I'm sorry you're going to have my back for a moment, so I'm going to go over here. And those rocks and some there. Coming back to the sea, it does look to me 
like it could do is having a little extra strength. Let's dry just a little bit too pale. So get the rigger. And this is the Prussian blue with green gold. Not too strong. I'm going to run a line across. I don't want to go too mad. This distant rock is kind of giving me a bit of concern. So I'm going to clean out my flat brush and I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre. Take a lot of it off my brush actually so I don't have it too wet. What I want to try to do is get some dry brush marks and give it a little bit more texture. Just warm the thing up a little bit. A little bit more. Maybe on that one as well. And as we're at it, let's go and put a bit more on this rock. Add a bit more shape to it whilst it's still relatively damp. Blend those slightly. And I think also a little bit's required over there as well. It's always a good idea say, to harmonise, to get the colours going all over the painting. Don't just have like a one colour for the sky and one colour for the beach. You've got to try and get them going around all over the place. And then it looks more naturalistic. A little bit on these. So how this brush is brilliant for making these little marks. One needs a friend. Let's give it a few, maybe or two, or three, <laughs> or four, <laughs> and get carried away. And maybe a few here. I'm going to step back. I need to have a look. What am I doing? And I want to risk taking my masking tape off. So let's take a deep breath. It's like taking a band-aid off, isn't it? It's like going to be out. Is it going to work? Is it going to be okay? Ta-da! <laughs> It's worked. Brilliant. Get rid of that. It served its purpose. I've just noticed that I've got a little bit of a, an extra ripple, if you like, going in this gorgeous runnel going down here. And I'm going to accentuate that. Could be dangerous when I've got a, yeah, I have a bleeding rock, oh no. We're going to go with the flow, create these gorgeous ripples in the water. Maybe if we're going to do it with some there, we better do some over this side as well. Nothing neat. I will go back with a clean brush, water on it, and gently move them around a little bit. What would be rather effective if it comes out that way a little bit to add that sense of width to the beach. And this one, help it move around a little bit. One's being stubborn. And a touch on the side. And I'm going to flick oh, the sky. Watch out for the sky. And I think I'm quite happy with that. That's my coastal scene done. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I'll see you next time. Thanks Louise, absolutely brilliant. Love the loose fluid style, nice and fresh, lots of activity and of course lots of fun. Okay, time for our final break now folks, but join us in part four when popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore conjures up a few more inspirational items from his magical pencil case. And I'll be dipping into the splashy paint post bag to help you solve a few more of your artistic dilemmas. Join us after the break. <laughs>